Today's date is July 19th, 2019 at 9.40 a.m. We're here with the Houston Asian American Archive housed at Rice University. Um, and we're conducting an interview with Mr. Bao Nok Pham. I'm Angela Huey. My name is May Lebron. So our first question is, um, Mr. Pham, when and where were you born? I was born in uh, Vietnam. Uh, the year, I believe, was 1957. Um, so in what part of Vietnam did you grow up? North or south, urban or rural? South Vietnam. Uh, I was born actually in Saigon, Vietnam, so it's, uh, uh, that's uh, South Vietnam. Um, so what kind of family and community were you born into? Did you have siblings? Um, what was your relationship with them like? It, it's, um, I consider it was a big family I have. Uh, five siblings, um, so the family has six. I, I am the oldest. I have two sisters and three brothers. Um, how about your parents and their occupations? My father was in the uh, Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese Air Force, and my mom was a housewife. And uh, that's typical of a um, uh, Vietnamese family or most of Asian family if I am if, if, that's, um, if, if, if that's correct, the husband is the main source of um, income in the house uh, and the wife, the spouse usually stay at home. Um, that was um, like 50 years ago. Now I believe it's, it's not like that anymore, but that was um, when I was born. And did you know how your parents met? Uh, no, I did not know, but I, I, um, I heard, I'm not sure that's true or not, but it, it was arranged, a marriage was arranged through my grandparents. Oh, I see. Um, and were you close with your grandparents and older generations? Yes, yes. Um, it's, um, like I said, it's typical. Um, in, a, in a family, you have three generations uh, living together in one room. Um, so where did you attend school throughout your childhood and what kind of school was it? It was a, a high school when I was in Vietnam, and I believe I was um, I finished my my high school, and then at that time um, the communists took over the country, and we had to uh, leave Vietnam. And what was that experience like for you? It's for my part, uh, it, it wasn't bad because my father was in the Air Force, so we were able to evacuate uh, prior to the, uh, the North Vietnamese, the, the communists took over the country. We left the South Vietnam about a um, few days, I think, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was like on the 25th or 26th of April 1975. So growing up, were there um, American soldiers around that you would encounter or not? Yeah. Yes, because uh, my father was in the Air Force and we live in more like a, a, a camp um, um, in, um, in uh, Saigon. So every day we, we encounter um, American soldiers every day and um, that was um, that's what good. Uh, I took some English classes and I have a, an American teacher. I believe he, he, he was a soldier. Mm -hmm. um, and earlier on, um, do you know how your family was affected during the French colonial era? That was, I, I don't because um, I think that was way before my parent time. Uh, I, uh, I believe that was ended in the 50, 1950s, 1940s. I, I'm not very sure, I'm not good with history, so, uh, but I think that's not prior. I, maybe it's I'm not, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So, growing up, um, did you have any, were you raised with any particular religious views? Um, and did religion play any role in your everyday life? I was um, born, um, my, my parents, um, well, my mom is Buddhist. My, uh, my father, is, I believe, is, is Buddhist, but if I remember correctly, my grandfather um, was Buddhist, my grandmom uh, was Catholic. So when, um, when my grandfather 
marry my grandmom, uh, he had to convert uh, to Catholic. So the family more like um, they, they pretty much um, my, my my grandparents pretty much have open view, but they they sent me to a Catholic school. Um, so that was um, great. What was it like to go to a Catholic school, um, not necessarily being Catholic yourself? It's um, to me. I always believe in God or believe in someone up there. As um, um, so, it, it was um, it was good to me. And I have no problem being in a Catholic school. Mm -hmm. And so, just growing up um, in your childhood, or even as a teenager, what was your impression of the political situation at the time with North and South Vietnam and? the communists and American intervention and so on? We were told about, we were taught uh, about uh, communism, about freedom. So at that time, I believe that um, uh, communism is not a good, um, um, I have to say, uh, I, in my mind at that time, and surrounded by so many American soldiers as well as uh, Vietnamese soldiers and my father was in the Air Force so I was taught that communism is bad. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you left Vietnam, how, uh, what was that process like and how old were you exactly? I was 17. My father was in the Air Force so he, he was able to uh, to bring my whole family and my relatives uh, and friends uh, together, we there were about thirty people. Uh, we went, uh, we were uh, we on board of an airplane, took us to a small island of the country, and then from there, uh, American ship was there to bring us to the ship and took us to Philippines. Mm -hmm. And then from there you flew to And the from there we went to, um, to the U.S. Um, did you come to Houston or somewhere else? Uh, no, at first we have to settle in a, uh, what we call a refugee camp in Pennsylvania. And then from there we were sponsored by uh, a church, a First Baptist Church in um, San Antonio. Uh, my father was in the Air Force so he had training in San Antonio. Uh, Lackland Air Force Base back in, I don't remember, maybe in the 60s. So when he escaped, when we all uh, got out of Vietnam, uh, he contacted the, the people in San Antonio. So we got uh, the church to sponsor our whole family to, um, to San Antonio. Um, and so do you know other people, did you have friends at the time who weren't able to leave Vietnam? Not my friends. Uh, later, uh, my classmates uh, were able to escape by boat. And I'm pretty sure you heard the story of boat people. There were a lot, a lot of South Vietnamese escaped by boat to other countries in the Southeast Asia. And from there, they came to the U.S. So uh, years later, I believe it was 1980 or so, uh, 80, 81, I was able to to talk to my classmates, and they, they came to uh, California, they came to the U.S., I said. Um, so, before you left Vietnam, what was your view of the United States, and how did that change over the years, if at all? Mm, I don't think it changed. I, I, when I was young, I, of course, at 17, we were more into other things than politics. Uh, we were told we heard that America is a great country. I still believe America is still a great country. I mean, it doesn't change my point of view at all. For the past many years, I, I, I was told I believe uh, about America. And when I came over here and my view doesn't change, this is a great country. It gives a lot of opportunities for hardworking people. Um, what brought you to Houston? I. Thing it was I I was um, in San Antonio to finish my um, my um, BBA degree so um, I have to say job opportunities uh, that's why we came over here and uh, also at that time I believe the Vietnamese population in Houston uh, was greater than than San Antonio 
and that's why we, we moved over here. Mm -hmm. um, so what was the adjustment like coming to the refugee camp and then going to San Antonio and just moving around in a new country? Well, I mean, at the refugee camp we were uh, provided with opportunity to study uh, English, um, even though we study in Vietnam, but studying in uh, a foreign language in your own country is different from studying English in, in, in America because you have TV, you have magazines, you have people around you, so you can carry the conversation every day. It, it's a lot quicker. And when I was in Vietnam, I took English, but then we went home, we speak Vietnamese, and we, we read Vietnamese paper, we watched the Vietnamese movies, so it, it was more difficult to improve the skill than when I was in the refugee camp. When did you start going to school again after you came to the United States? Uh, immediately. Um, I went I went to San Antonio, so I had to take what they call a, a GED. Uh, I took that and I got admitted to San Antonio, Co uh, San Antonio College. And then from there I went to uh, UT, uh, University of uh, Texas in San Antonio. And was it difficult to be a student in the United States having just come over from Vietnam? Yes, it, it, was, it was very difficult. Uh, number one, uh, because of the, the, the language. I remember my, my difficulty, the most difficult thing for me was to study history. I mean, with, well, I believe with, um, with American um, students, history or government should be easy because they studied us in high school and the language. But for me, um, it, was, it was very difficult to follow um, what the, uh, the professors say in class but we have to do a lot of reading and then study. Um, to answer your question, that was tough. Were there any particular moments that you felt were challenging? Every day, every day, because at that time we, we um, not only had problems with school, but we also um, have financial problems. Uh, I had to, uh, to work uh, during school. I couldn't attend school full time. I had to, to work full time in order to support the families, to support the tuition, myself. So I have to work pretty much 40 hours a week and go to school, um, I guess, 12 hours, 9 hours, depending on the semester. But that was difficult. Um, and what jobs did your parents get when they, when they came over? Um, I believe my father was able to get a job. It's, it's not a real job, but it was more like labor, uh, work in, in a, a dealership, a, a car dealership. Mm -hmm. And what was that adjustment like for them? That was very difficult because uh, as an officer in the uh, Air Force, he uh, pretty much have a good lifestyle in Vietnam. So. Uh, he had to adjust, my mom had to adjust, and we as kids had to adjust. Um, was your mother still a homemaker when you came Yes, home? yes. Um, and what were your living conditions like compared to when you were in Vietnam? Oh, much, much worse. I mean, in Vietnam we, we were pretty, I mean, good. Uh, we had a good living condition. We, we have a big house. Uh, we went to San Antonio, we had to rent a house with, I think, small two, three bedroom and, you know, eight people have to stay in that uh, house, um, so it, it was uh, more difficult. And what about the transition for your siblings? How was the adjustment for them, especially since they were even younger than you? Mm. It's easier for, for younger uh, kids because uh, I believe my youngest brother was like I can't remember exactly, six, seven years old. And my other brother and sister, my sibling, were a lot younger. I was 17, so uh, they were all below, under under 15. So it, um, it's, it was easier for, for them to adapt to the new environment. And do you think it was easier for them in terms of learning English as well? Oh, much easier, much easier. 
So when you were in San Antonio, did you know a lot of other Vietnamese people, Vietnamese families? There were not, not that many uh, Vietnamese, uh, because I believe in, in 1975, the government had a tendency to move um, all the refugee, all the Vietnamese refugee across uh, all 50 states. They did not want to to put all 130,000 Vietnamese in one location. So the purpose is, um, I, I believe that we were intentionally sent to other areas in, in the country. So in San Antonio, um, there, there, I believe the population, the Vietnamese population was about a thousand, two thousand people, not not the whole lot. So for a big city like San Antonio. Wow. So you weren't were you able to make Vietnamese friends, um, either you or your parents or your siblings, or were you not able to? Well, we 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 were. I was not. Um, that was not my first preference. The um, the prior priority was to learn the new language, go to school, and. Um, make money for the family. Uh, and I was thinking more about future uh, friendship, Vietnamese or other uh, people. It was really, uh, at that time, it didn't come to my mind. And what were your first jobs, or your first job when you came at the age of 17? Oh, I, um, I uh, had, uh, I was uh, a dishwasher at the old San Francisco Steakhouse. It was uh, a great job, friendly people, a uh, good place. I had, uh, I have um, all the steak I can eat. <laughs> uh, it, it was great. I was there uh, for a few months and I got promoted to be a bus boy. So bus boy, I got um, tips from uh, the waiter or waitress um, they, because they got sections to, to host or to serve. So um, they get tips from customer and they want the bus boy to clean the table real quick. Uh, I can clean the table as fast as I could. That way um, they will have, they'll be able to get more customers. So they get more tips and, and they share the tip with the bus boy. But my first job was a dishwasher. I see. Um, and what did you study in college and how did you decide what to study? Um, I, I, I was told by friends and counselors that accounting would be a very easy job, uh, easy um, um, career, uh, and, and easier to, to find jobs. So I, uh, I choose that field, and uh, I graduate with a, a BBA in accounting, uh, because I was told by, by people that it's, it's easy to get jobs. That's why I choose accounting. And when you were getting your bachelor's, did you live um, with your family at the time? Uh, no, not really, because my family was in, all in San Antonio, but then later on, my father found a job in Snyder, Snyder, Texas. So he moved everybody up to Snyder, Texas. But I was in college um, in San Antonio. I didn't want to move, so I, I was there by myself. Did you have roommates? or did Yes, you I, <laughs> I had roommates. Uh, we have um, nine, I remember, nine Vietnamese students and we rented a, a two-bedroom apartment and the two-bedroom apartment has a living room so we divided three people in each room. Um, it, it was uh, tough but it was fun. And were they also refugees? Yes, they were all refugees from Vietnam. And did they also live in the San Antonio area? Yes, we were all in San Antonio, so that, that we were all in San Antonio College. So the first year in the community college, we, we were together. And then later on, people moved. Some went to UT Austin, some um, went to um, uh, UTSA. Uh, but we, were, we, we, we all were there, nine people in, in, in that apartment. What was it like to be spending time with people who had similar experiences to you? What was the question again? I'm sorry. Um, what was it like to spend time with people who experienced many of the same things as you? Was it comforting? How did it feel? I was um, like again. I said life for college student was just like simple. I we did not have much time to think about what was it like or better or not. All we were thinking is how to get an A in the class and how to get money to 
pay for rent and, and, and tuition and uh, food, that's all. That was all, so we, we didn't have time to think about anything, anything else, any other things. So after you graduated, what job did you get? I got a job in San Antonio, that's why um, I, and I knew the San Antonio, I, I could um, get a job easier, so that's why I moved to, I mean, um, Houston, I'm sorry. Houston was easier to get a job, so I, I went to Houston, I got a job in, in a saving and loan um, financial institution. Um, so at what point did you decide that you wanted to do more with your career? Because we know right now you're, you're no longer an accountant, you are many other things. Yes, yes. Um, I was an accountant and then I know I was told that being an accountant, if I want to advance, I have to have uh, a CPA certificate. So I study and I got my CPA. I opened my uh, CPA firm while working for uh, a company um, and then I was able to have my um, Vietnamese but as a CPA when, when people have tax problem and they want to go to tax court um, CPA cannot help them to go to, to court only lawyer can um, so um, I had an opportunity to refer work to, uh, to a lawyer and uh, he turned around and had me do all the detail work. I remember at that time, uh, he charged my, my client, I referred the client to him, and he charged $200 an hour. And then he turned around and he paid me about $35 an hour. And then I said, wow, I could have charged $200 an hour, why? So that's when I decided to, uh, to apply for law school. I went to uh, University of Oklahoma, OU, uh, law school. Um, I have um, a scholarship over there, not much, but because I, I am a minority, they consider uh, a minority scholarship, so I was able to get that. I, was, uh, I got um, accepted to other law schools, but uh, I choose um, OU because uh, OU is a, is a good school, and uh, plus because I have uh, some money, a scholarship, so that's why I went to OU. Turn you over to May. So you started your career in the United States as a busboy, but now you are president of VIA TV and VIA Radio Networks, CEO of V247 Power, and a certified public accountant. What motivated you to become involved in such a wide variety of business, and how do you balance all these positions? Um, opportunity, Kim. Um, I, I remember when I was a lawyer, well, I'm still a lawyer, but uh, I've been uh, helping people um, for the past many years and I believe that uh, media uh, has a great impact on people's lives and I believe that Vietnamese um, in Houston as well as in, in, in the whole United States uh, uh, need to have a, a Vietnamese radio um, Vietnamese TV station as well as Vietnamese radio station. So um, I had partners. We got together, so we uh, formed uh, Viet TV in Houston. Uh, Viet TV right now has, uh, we are also on, on Direct TV, so if people watch Viet TV or people turn on Direct TV, they can watch us. Um, the purpose is to inform the Vietnamese about the news, we want to re, uh, preserve our culture. Uh, we want to bring all the good things to Vietnamese who cannot or, or have the uh, the inability to comprehend English uh, or the news in the U.S. So that's why we decided to uh, to have the Vietnamese uh, TV as well as Vietnamese radio. Uh, regarding V247 Power, uh, we, V247 Power is a, is a retail electric uh, provider and uh, we believe that if we can provide electricity to people at a lower rate, that would be great for the people. Of course, um, we do not discriminate. I mean, customers, our customers, whoever come to us, we will we provide electricity to them. However, uh, we uh, want to help the Vietnamese, so we 
uh, when they receive bills, uh, electric bills, we have bills in, in Spanish, uh, we have bills in English, and we also have bills in uh, Vietnamese. We are the only uh, Vietnamese uh, electric provider in the whole United States, and we are the only Vietnamese electric company that provides Vietnamese bills to Vietnamese customers. Now, other companies, I believe, they provide um, Spanish uh, and also English, and we are uh, providing three, three types of bills, English, Spanish, and Vietnamese. So, obviously, you think um, culturally specific media is important. Did you grow up with any Vietnamese media? No, when I when I when I was in Vietnam, I was so young to um, to pay attention to the news or to be involved by by media. When I came over here for the first few years, I was concentrating in studying. Um, I remember when I was in law school, I didn't know anything about current affairs. I didn't. I mean, I knew who the president of the U.S. was, but I hardly read newspaper because I, I did not have time. And when I went out to work, I started realizing that um, a lot of Vietnamese um, talked to me, and when I during our discussion, um, they they did not have a clear understanding about politics in the U.S. They did not have clear understanding about uh, other things. So that's why I say we somehow have to try to help the people uh, by providing them not only um, political views but also entertainment. So that's why we, we had uh, the, um, the TV and the radio. Um, so when your family first came to the United States, was it difficult for them to understand their bills and things like that? Is that what inspired you to do this or was it just something you came up bill with. Bill is easy. You look at the number and you can sign a check, you pay bill. But um, my, I believe it was a shock for my, my parent. Um, entertainment uh, was difficult because um, I guess um, they have to watch American TV. There's no Vietnamese TV, there was no Vietnamese radio. Uh, for, uh, for, I believe, from 1975 to probably about 2000, so about 25, 30 years, uh, they had to adapt to the new culture. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's just that for um, an, an older generation, when they, um, when people in the 40s or 50s who, who, who come over here to this country and they have to drop everything and come home. What kind of programming is featured in Via TV? We have everything. We have, um, we, just like any other uh, TV station, we have news. We provide a news uh, segment about four or five times a day. We have morning news. We have noon, afternoon, and news at night. So um, that's that's number one uh, thing. That, that's what I, we concentrate in, in, in news. Number two, we, we have Vietnamese movie. We have Vietnamese music, we record concerts, <coughs> and we provide, and we have movies, and uh, entertainment is the second thing. And also we have uh, programs for, for kids, for children. Uh, we want to teach them about the, the history, um, not only Vietnamese history, but also world history. What's the current viewership of Via TV, and has it grown? It's been growing. And we can tell by um, by the subs, uh, subscription um, by DirecTV. DirecTV has a special program where they where viewer can um, can join DirecTV and register so they can have um, foreign language um, programs. So I believe <coughs> that the subscription is, is is good. However, now with the internet and with the streaming. I'm not sure about the future of TV um, and newspaper. Uh, I, I'm not sure what the future will be because I think traditional TV will change in the next 10, 20 years. Um, now people can watch everything on YouTube. Uh, they can go to Netflix, um, uh, Amazon. Um, so TV will, will change.
Have you thought of pivoting to TV or internet for via TV or radio? What we did right now um, that um, we uh, before we have a program, um, a, a, we build what we call a Uno box. It's just like Hulu or um, um, Apple. Uh, however, when we went into uh, a contract with DirecTV, we were prohibited from having or developing uh, UNO. So, <coughs> in the future, I'm not sure about the future between us and DirecTV, but if it's, uh, if it's good relationship, we will continue. But if not, then we were thinking about uh, <coughs> streaming movies or news through a, a box like, like Uno, like Apple, Google. So would you say that streaming is the most significant change or difference that you have noticed or experienced? Well, I, I, I think so. I think it's, it's the trend. I mean, if you see now, um, if you see the history of, uh, let's say, <coughs> we, we, we used to have a big company like Blockbuster. After several years, Blockbuster is no longer there. So now you see entertainment, you see Netflix, you see Amazon, Prime, and um, you see YouTube, right? So I, I believe in the future um, those will be um, the sources of entertainment. Can you recall the biggest challenge you have faced in your career and how did you overcome it? In my career, mm -hmm. as I have... <laughs> Let's see um, what you, okay, for, as an accountant, okay, and I have to work in a big corporation, I think politics is, is one of the biggest challenges. I mean, when you work in a, a big corporation, it's not what you uh, can do, um, but it's more like uh, who you will know, who you know, who you hang out with. And, and politics is the biggest um, uh, challenge in, in a corporate environment. <coughs> when I um, moved away and I changed my career to be an attorney um, to help um, people, I um, again feel like the challenge would be um, the, um, the knowledge of the people. A lot of people don't know anything about the law. Uh, how to help them uh, is, is very difficult because they, they um, I'm talking about the Vietnamese uh, people, um, they were uh, born in a foreign country, in a country like Vietnam, so their perception in law um, is <coughs> totally different from, from, from American. So in, in order to educate them, it's, it's very tough to change the, the idea, the <coughs> perceptions of our people. Um, then we have our um, TV station and radio station, and uh, the toughest challenge would be the, the financial. It's, uh, it's very difficult because with American TV station, um, they can easily make money with advertising. Um, 30 seconds of Super Bowl can bring them millions of dollars. But for Vietnamese um, TVs, we cannot charge any Vietnamese or Asian business millions of dollars. They only willing to pay a few hundred or a few thousand at the most. Uh, of course, there are big companies, um, big Vietnamese companies willing to pay, but um, the advertising, the income, for, for Vietnamese TV and radio is so small when we compare to the mainstream TV. What kind of businesses normally advertise via TV or via radio? Is it normally Vietnamese American businesses? Uh, well, we have uh, American businesses also like McDonald. I mean, we have uh, uh, American business, but they have to be big, big corporation. Of course, when they want to advertise with us, they want to know their our, our um, subscription, how many viewers we have. So um, it is not easy to get a big corporation to to pay uh, advertising. We we 
we have advertising from uh, all sorts of um, like car dealership, um, casino, um, restaurants, um, American business. Yes, they do. But compared to uh, compare with American TV, we the financial difficulty is there. We we don't have the uh, the financial capability to expand or to maintain the um, the Vietnamese station. So that's the biggest challenge right now. Have you considered developing any other businesses in Houston? I'm too old now. I'm not sure if I can. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I can uh, um, uh, um, continue. But right now, we we are working. We have uh, our business as V247 Power. That's the retail electric. And uh, I think uh, Texas is a uh, is a good state. But we are planning to go to the east and I hope in the future um, all state will be deregulated meaning that people will have a choice to choose their own electricity company that's what I'm hoping so um, that's um, that, I think that's the future for me if uh, we want to expand earlier you mentioned kind of politicking as a challenge in your career having to you know know different people to get ahead. Do you think that being Vietnamese American or being an immigrant has affected your experience in that regard? Well, I mean, yes, number one is the perception. I think um, the, 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 the way we as the Vietnamese think is different from the way that um, American or European thinking, okay? Um, in, in when we're talking about politics, we're talking about um, life, we're talking about behavior. Um, I believe in Asian culture, uh, we have a tendency to keep our wealth, our money, and then pass on to our uh, generation, to the kid, to the grandkids. But uh, with American, with the European, that's totally different. I mean, Bill Gates doesn't want to keep his money, he, he give away. And I think that's the great thing. I think um, um, the Asian people have to change their idea, uh, is to give more than to take. Do you think you've ever experienced discrimination, either in your career or um, shortly after you came to the United States as a student? I believe discrimination is everywhere. However, I was fortunate I did not have an opportunity or I was not in a situation where I was being discriminated. Have you been involved in any organizations outside of the Vietnamese community? Uh, yes, with the State Bar of Texas for, you know, we lawyer uh, associate uh, with the Texas Society of uh, CPAs. Uh, where we work together, we, yes, those are the uh, places, of course, still not like um, other organizations because we, we have a tendency to improve our profession. <coughs> are there any areas in which you expect the city of Houston to do better for the Vietnamese community? The city of Houston? Mm -hmm. The city of Houston, I think Houston is a great city. It's, it, it does provide, it's just like America, it, it does provide opportunities for not only Vietnamese, it's, it's for all people. Whether you're Vietnamese, you're Hispanic, or you're American, if, you, if you're willing to work hard, if you're willing, you believe in the system, uh, you can advance. Um, are you married? Yes. Um, how did you meet your significant other? Um, when I first graduated uh, from law school, I, uh, I had to uh, work in the immigration, not I had to, but I, I worked in the immigration area. So um, I traveled a lot from, from, from you know, U.S. to Vietnam, uh, back and forth, back and forth to uh, have people with, um, with family-based uh, visa application for student visa, for investment visa. So. I went back to Vietnam and I, I met my wife there. Um, do you have any children? I have two. Um, how has being a parent changed the way that you view things or see the world? Uh, well, being, it is, um, 
I think I don't know how to. Um, I'm not really um, okay. Being a parent, we um, I guess we we are less selfish. We're thinking more about the future of, of the kids, and uh, still I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. But I still feel like. Um, um, I'm still a, a, a dictator, um, even I don't want to, but it's, I, I have a tendency, just like most Asian people, we want to guide our children to a certain area of education. And um, um, I, I know, I know that's not correct, I know that's not right, because um, people have uh, the right to choose their career, people have the right to choose their own path and people cannot listen to parents and listen to the way parents want them to be. And I, I believe in that, I strongly believe in that, but somehow it, in my mind I still want my kid to go to a certain area. Do you feel that your children have been raised with similar or different values than how you and your siblings were raised? Well, totally, totally different because they were born here in America. They went to school. I mean, they they totally they were raised totally different from my generation. Um, how did your experiences growing up in Vietnam and as an immigrant affect the way you are raising your children? It um, we we are well, my children are fortunate when, because they were born here and they were raised here. Um, when I was in Vietnam, I have to say um, the um, the way we grew up, the economy. We were fortunate. We, we were not very poor, but compared to the uh, um, standard of living in the U.S., uh, we were nowhere close uh, to to the standard over here. That's number one. Studying over there uh, was more difficult because we were most, uh, I say, I have to say, all um, schools over there uh, do not have the facilities like like in the U.S. I mean, we study biology over there, but we we did not have opportunity to to actually uh, go to the lab and do what we can do like we do over here in the U.S. So. I think that my my children over here are very fortunate compared to um, children in, in a lot of other countries. And do you choose to identify yourself as American, Asian American, Vietnamese, Vietnamese American? I have to say I am still um, um, American, um, Asian American because uh, I. I've been here for so many years. Uh, this is my country. Uh, I'm willing to do whatever to protect this country. I uh, I will obey the law because I <coughs> sworn as a lawyer that I have to uh, have the Constitution of the United States of America. But there's some some part of, of Asian still in my heart, and I do want to have Asian in particular Vietnamese. Um, yes, I, I, I can do whatever I can, um, I will um, for the benefit, but also uh, the main concern still uh, United States. And what does this um, Asian American identity mean to you? Mm, doesn't mean much except that the color of my skin is different and mm -hmm. I believe that my ancestor is Asian. Uh, but we as human uh, beings, we as people, I don't see any difference between uh, American or Asian or Hispanic or Indian. Um, just backing up a little, earlier you mentioned that you met your wife in Vietnam. Um, so was she, did she not immigrate to the U.S. until after you were married? Um, we have what we call um, a K-1 visa. So I met her and I filed a petition to bring her over here. And after she came over here, she had 90 days to get married. And within the 90 days, we got married and I filed a petition for her.
to get her green card. And was it difficult to get her visa and then her green card? No, not at all. At that time, it was 1999, so uh, it was um, it was different. Now, I believe it's a lot harder, um, especially under uh, President Trump. Immigration law uh, have changed a lot, and I don't know what happened in the future. Maybe it's more difficult, but I believe that we have the, the Constitution of the United States says that you have freedom of marriage. So I believe that if you want to marry someone, doesn't matter where that person is, you do have the right to file a petition and to bring your spouse over here together with you. That is, uh, that's the Constitution. We have the freedom of travel, freedom of religion, freedom of marriage, and I hope that, that those freedoms will be continuously uh, kept. Did you notice differences between yourself and your wife in the way you were raised and the way you were educated and so on because she did not um, immigrate to the United States? Um, at first, maybe, but now it's, um, I think she is fine. Um, I, I don't see a lot of differences. Um, and how old are your children, by the way? My daughter is 19 and my son is 17. And what are their names? Uh, uh, the girl, my daughter is Brianna mm -hmm. Pham, and uh, my son is Brian Pham. Every time when we say the name, people laugh, and they went to school, they uh, together, and uh, they would tease, and they say, oh, Brian, Brianna, free Brian, Brian. Um, do you enjoy any particular books, movies, magazines, sports, games, or other hobbies? I enjoy watching movies. I enjoy uh, reading, so uh, anything's good is is pretty entertaining. Um, do you have any particular? Do you have any favorite movies or books? I I like the movie Godfather. It's it's mm -hmm. really good. I also like the book. Do you remember the first movie you watched in America when you immigrated? Wow. No, I cannot remember. It's uh, it, it's has been so long. In 1975. Now it's 2019, 40 some years, and I I believe that my memory is has been lapped. I mean, I I I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. Do you have any memories from when you first came over that really stick out? Any culture shock or anything like that? Um, no. Not really. Uh, I cannot. I, uh, maybe if I have a few hours to think, or maybe if I sit down and write my book, and probably it will come back. But right now, um, all of a sudden, no. Are you planning on writing a book? Uh, yes, yes, uh, when I retire. Okay. Um, so who has been the biggest influence on your life, and can you tell me a little bit about them? I, I think my mom, she, she, even she was a housewife, she, but she raised us up. My father was busy. He was in the Air Force, so he hardly at home. But uh, my mom taught me about the value, the family value. Um, she told me, she taught me to differentiate between right and wrong what a person should do and should never have done. So um, I appreciate all that, and I think she had a great impact on my life. What would you say your proudest accomplishment is? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were able to build um, uh, B-247 Power, um, the, the very first uh, Vietnamese electricity company. We were able to build via TV. Uh, via TV, at one time, we had uh, nine stations. We have station in Houston and Dallas. We have station in California and San, uh, uh, San Los Angeles and San Jose. We have station in Boston, Philadelphia, Washington D.C. And um, we we everywhere. I mean, from east to west. And that's. Uh, 
that's what I'm very proud of. What are your hopes for the future in general? In general? Well, um, in general, regarding my um, business, I hope it will expand. <coughs> it will be able to have people uh, with the need. We, we want to uh, uh, provide electricity at a very low cost to everyone. And uh, that's my concern right now. And then what legacy do you want to pass on to future generations? Uh, to continue with, with, mm -hmm. with what we're doing, to uh, helping, to help people, to uh, help people uh, to save money, to help people um, to understand uh, about current affairs, to help people to see the world uh, in a clearer view, and to avoid uh, being selfish, and that's, that's what I, I hope we all can. And then my final question is, um, what advice do you have for the future generations? I am not sure I'd be able to give out that advice, but if uh, I have to say one thing is to, to work very hard. If you believe in something, you have to go all the way for that. And um, when I came over here, I did not think that I was able to get a law degree, but I finally got it. Um, when I came over here, I didn't think we can open and run a um, you know, hundred of million dollars company, but we're here. Uh, lead to for some power, generate millions and millions of dollars. So uh, um, work hard and believe in what you can do. What do you think motivated you to accomplish so much? Uh, there was no, I w all I was thinking was working and, and get to the point is there was, I had when you say what motivated me, um, I really don't know, I don't have the answer. Do you have any? Okay, just backing up slightly. Okay. Um, so I'm interested, I'm really interested in when you moved to San Antonio mm -hmm. and you said you didn't know many other Vietnamese people. So. Um, I assume your mother was cooking because she was a homemaker. What did she make if she didn't have? Well, my my my, my uh, mom w was there with us for the first few months, and then um, my whole family went to um, Snyder. Oh. Okay. So, but when we she was there, she um, she cooked some Vietnamese food. But at that time, in 1975, there was no Asian market supermarket. Uh, we have two know how to eat tacos. We have to know how to eat hamburgers and I was in love with Big Mac so I mean we, we had no problem at all but when um, my, my family went to Snyder and I was as a student so uh, what we had was American food um, you know we, we had um, uh, noodles, instant noodles and that's about it. And how about when your wife came over, what kind of adjustments did she have to make? Um, and she adapted very well. Um, I think uh, it, she had, um, maybe she is a special type of case. She had no problem to adapt into the American culture, uh, including American food. Great. Those are all of our questions. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you.